Grace the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Pastor Tony Brooke Brown. I'm coming with our spiritual fitness word today, our nourishment for today. Get your pens, get your paper, get your uh, notebook, your Bible, whatever it is that you need to take down notes so that you can go back and do your study after we do our study. And we are continuing in the book of Genesis and we're going into chapter 10 today. So don't forget that this is spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. So don't forget to get the information for our morning prayer Monday through Friday. If you have not yet joined us, the information is underneath this YouTube video. And then of course you come on here Monday through Friday and get the word so that you get your spiritual nourishment. So um, again, don't forget to subscribe and to uh, hit the bell if you want to get notifications when I do upload Monday through Friday and sometimes some other days and some other stuff, right? So you want to get this word. So go ahead and hit subscribe if you have not yet done so and hit the bell if you want the notifications. And we are going to go forth today, Genesis chapter 10. We have been going through the book of Genesis. So if you miss one through nine, right? If you miss those chapters, you can go back and watch those sessions. So we're going to open up in prayer and we're going to go forward and the name of Jesus. This is all about spiritual fitness, putting on the armor, growing, changing, and progressing so that we are impacted by the word and we are impacting the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today and we rejoice in you and bless your name and honor you, God. We thank you for your word, the spiritual nourishment that fills us up, the bread of life, the living water. We pray your Holy Spirit as our teacher will take over, as I decrease, that you would increase, that you would minister to us individually and collectively and give us the word, give us understanding and help us to increase in our faith and our walk with you, Lord, that we would draw nearer to you and you would draw nearer to us. Help us to be effective as witnesses, as ambassadors of Christ, the light of the world and the salt of the earth, that everything we do is for your glory and the uplifting of your kingdom. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, chapter 10 shouldn't take us but a minute because we're not going to go really, 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 really deep. So, we know that in chapter 9, though, um, we were talking about after Noah and his sons got off of the ark and how God had, you know, told them to be fruitful and multiply, allowed them then to eat meat, but not with the lifeblood in it. Um, also made a covenant um, with the rainbow that God would never destroy the whole earth, everything on the earth with a flood again. Um, so we looked at some of those things, but then we also know that because um, God had instructed Noah and his sons to be fruitful and to um, to multiply, we had just touched on the fact um, on some of the groups of people that had come from uh, Noah, uh, Noah's sons, right? In, in which, like who came from Shem, who came from him and who came from Japheth, because the Bible tells us that all mankind, everybody has come from one of those three brothers, right? So that was listed, um, as in Genesis chapter nine, um, that everyone, um, they filled the earth, like everyone came from Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And so um, in uh, saying that, you know, it says the whole earth was overspread by the three sons of Noah. And that's when I had kind of touched on the fact that um, we know that through Shem, the Israelites came through uh, Shem. We got the Hebrews, the Chaldeans, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Armenians. And then um, through Ham, we know the Canaanites, the Egyptians, the Philistines, the Hittites, the Amorites. There's a bunch of ites that came from Ham, though. And we had talked about um, Canaan, um, his Ham's son who was cursed, right? We talked about how um, it was Noah's grandson. Noah cursed his own grandson. Um, and because of that, those that come through Canaan, which is... Ham's son, those are all of those ites and the people that are um, going to be enemies of the children of Israel. They're going to be the ites that are in Canaan when 
after God uh, establishes his people, the Hebrews, the Israelites, after he establishes his people and after they are in bondage in Egypt and after God delivers them and then he's sending them to the promised land. The promised land is the land of Canaan with the Canaanites and all the other ites, right, that are related. And, um, and the children of Israel, the Israelites, are to drive them out, to put them out, to take over the land. And so... Um, so that was um, uh, Ham's descendants. And then we have Japheth. And it, uh, we know the Greeks, the Thracians, the uh, Scyth Scythians. Um, but we know that they are basically in Asia, right? Um, and Ham's descendants settled like in Canaan and Egypt and Africa and in the other parts of Africa. And then, um, so we get a little bit of, you know, background through commentaries and research and studying, and you can find out who came from who. As we read through the Bible, you'll be able to see more. And that's what takes us into uh, chapter 10, because chapter 10 is often called uh, the table of nations. And so we, we uh, are um, able to see that 70 nations, you know, are coming from or come from Sham, Ham, and Japheth, because the whole world, um, all that are in the earth come from those three brothers. But as we look in the table of nations, it kind of breaks down some of the descendants of each of the brothers. And I'm going to look in the NLT. I'm going to read this from the NLT, uh, chapter 10. And it starts off saying, this is the account of the families of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the three sons of Noah. Many children were born to them after the great flood. It says the descendants of Japheth. The descendants of Japheth were uh, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, or Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus. The descendants of Gomer, uh, those are the descendants of Japheth's grandson, Gomer. I mean, his son, Gomer, were Ashkenaz, Ritha. And Targama. And then the descendants of Javon were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, Rodanim, and their descendants became the seafaring peoples that spread out to various lands, each identified by their own language, clan, and national identity. We're seeing the establishing of the different nations, the different tongues, the different people. And what you want to be aware of also, um, before we get into chapter 11 on the next session, is that in chapter 11, when we're talking about the people of one language coming together to build the Tower of Babel, right? We have to understand that really the event in chapter 11 of the Tower of Babel um, is happening before um, chapter 10. Chapter 10 has given us the lineage. It's given us this information, right? But, um, but chapter 11, um, that is an event that took place before all of these nations of people. Because when we look in chapter 11, we see they were all of one language, right? But when they began to build the tower, trying to reach up to the heavens, reach up to God, um, God confused them and they and 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 their languages so that they couldn't understand one another. So when we're looking in chapter 10, we need to understand that um, you know, it's not contradicting itself. So I didn't want you to read chapter 10 and see these different nations and people spreading out the languages, the clans, the national identity of them, and then go to chapter 11 when we get there. And it says they were all of one tongue. They were coming together. They were on one accord, of one mind. Um, so it's not contradicting one another. We just have to understand that this is just giving us some information, the table of the nations. And then when we get to chapter 11, that was before all of the different languages and nations. And so um, in verse 6, it tells us the descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizram, Put, and Canaan. This is where you see that Canaan is a child of Ham. And then it tells us in verse 7, the descendants of Cush were Sema, Havila, Tapta, Ramah, Saptica, Saptica. The descendants of Ramah were Shema and Dedan. Cush 
was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became proverbial. People would say, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. So we don't know a lot about Nimrod, but we know that he was a heroic warrior, right? And he came through Ham. And so we've heard people say different things about Nimrod, um, but the truth of it is we don't really know a lot about this Nimrod. Uh, people are compared to him, but he was a great hunter, a warrior. And in verse 10, it says he built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia and the cities of Babylon, Eric, Akkad, and Kalne. From there, he expanded his territory to Assyria, building the cities of Nineveh, Rehoboth, Reboahoth, Ur, Kala, and Resin, this great city located between Nineveh and Kalha. Mizram was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, Nephtalites, Nephtahites, Pathrasites, Kaslahites, and the Kaf. To rights from whom the Philistines came. So even the Philistines came through Ham. We have to, you know, remember some of these ites and some of these groups because these are some of the enemies of God's people. When he establishes his people and you start reading about Babylon and you start talking about the Philistines and how the Israelites and the Philistines would fight against one another. The ites that had to be driven out of the land of Canaan, we began to see that Ham uh, and his descendants, you know, are in opposition to God. And you see that they are the ones that are fighting against and, and under the descendants of Shem, where the Israelites came from, the Hebrews came from. And so then uh, it tells us in verse 15, Canaan's oldest son was Sidon the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Gergesites, uh, the Hivites, the Archites, the Sinites, the um, Arvidites, Zimmerites, and the Hamathites. The Canaanite clans eventually spread out and the territory of Canaan extended from Sidon in the north to Gerar and Gaza, Gaza in the south and east as far as Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim near Lasha. And then it tells us finally in verse 20, these were the descendants of Ham identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. So then we have the descendants of Shem in verse 21. Sons were born to Shem, the older brother of Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the descendants of Eber. The descendants of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arphax, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. Uh, it tells us the descendants of Aram were Uz, Hull, Gether, and Mash. When we read the story of Job, uh, it says he is from us. And so then you have uh, verse 24, Aphax, Aphazak was the father of Shelah, and Shelah was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, which means division, for during his lifetime, the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the ancestor of Almadad, Shelef, Hazar, Mavath, Zerath, Hadaram, Yuzel, Dikla, Obel, Abimel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. The territory they occupied extended from Mesha all the way to Zephyr to the eastern mountains. These were the descendants of Shem identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. The conclusion is these are the clans that descended from Noah's sons arranged by nation according to their lines of descent. All the nations of the earth descended from these clans 
after the great flood. So again, 70 nations that will come from Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, some say it's 72 because then they count um, Israel and uh, Judah because these were two nations that were God's people. He had the nation of Israel, and then when it split, it was Israel, right, and Judah. And so then they say that they were 72 nations, but we need to understand that they all come from the three sons, and it breaks it down. And as we go through the studies, we'll be able to uh, go in a little bit deeper on who's from where, which nations are from whom, but we have an overview right now, and we see that through, um, through Canaan being cursed, right, that the people that come through his lineage are, are, are um, enemies of God's people as we read through the scriptures and see who were in opposition to them, who they were fighting after, who they were driving out. But we also um, are looking at the fact that, you know, God was established in some things already that, you know, you couldn't possibly have known they were coming to pass. And we've talked before about how God knows everything and he already has a plan. How in Genesis chapter three, he had already really talked about the plan of salvation. And so he already had a plan before Adam and Eve even sinned. And then here he already has a plan for Canaan, the people that were coming through Ham's lineage before they were even birthed, he already had a plan. And he he allowed the curse because he already knew what was going to take place. And he already knew that, you know, he was going to have these people that were set aside for him. Uh, and that they were going to be in bondage and that he was going to deliver them. And then they were going to uh, go to this promised land and it was going to be Canaan and they were going to be wicked people there. And they were going to have come through Canaan. Uh, and so, and, you know, God had already had a plan just like he has a plan now. So when we look around and we see things that don't make any sense, that we don't understand them and why they're, you know, unfolding the way they are, why different things are taking place. Um, there's always a plan. God always knows what's going on. He's in the past, present, and the future. Uh, he knows what he's doing. That as we read through the word of God and even in Revelations, we are seeing, you know, some things that are coming to pass, some things that are happening because the plan was already. God knows everything. Before things happen, God knows them. Before people were established, he knew what they were going to do. And, you know, he knew, you know, how man was going to sin. And he knew the wickedness that was coming. And, and so God already knows what he's going to do, what, you know, is to come to pass. And he allows things to happen so that those things unfold just the way he planned for them to, you know, based off of man's wickedness and evil and rebellion. Uh, God already has a plan. And so when we look in chapter 10, again, this is often called the table of nations. It gives us a little bit of background information. I know it's not real deep in principles and different things like that, but I wanted to go through the chapter because I want you to be able to look up the table of nations. I want you to go back as your homework and, and study on that. And maybe you want to dig deeper now and see which people came from which son. You know, oftentimes people are wondering, you know, where, you know, where they you know come from which one and you know when you look at the you know the the asian the the european you when you look at the different um nationalities the different places where people are um established and living different nations of people you you can go back and you can basically look up this information as part of your study and just kind of get an idea of what it is that we're going to be going into as we read further into the word of god so that is something that you can do on your own right now before we dig deeper into it but i want you to be prepared for chapter 11 and 12 because as we go into these next chapters we are going to begin to see the establishing of God's people. We're going to start seeing, um, you know, what is taking place to lead us into, um, you know, the the uh, the story uh, that is able, you know, to allow us to connect with the children of Israel as we look at how God establishes them, how He sets them apart, uh, the plans that He has for them, why He set them apart, what it is that they're supposed to be doing, and how they're supposed to be, you know, bringing glory to His name so that all the nations would know that God is real. As we begin to connect with the story of the Israelites, we should be able to see a clearer picture of how we're supposed to walk how we're supposed to live. We 
are able to see some of the mistakes that they made in the New Testament. It says it's an example unto us, right? And so we can look at their lives and their walk and the things that God did in the natural with them. And he's doing it in the spiritual now with us. And so it's some good information. Chapter 11 is going to tell us about the table, table, uh, the table, the uh, Tower of Babel, and then the separation that began the different languages and such. But in chapter 12 is when we are pushing into Abraham, and then we are able, like I said, to be able to look at how God is going to establish his people and how he is um, moving us into seeing that a Savior is coming, that a Messiah is coming, that, you know, there are prophecies that are going forth and different lessons and principles that we can learn, especially in the book of Genesis, especially in this book of uh, beginnings, new, because the word Genesis means beginning. We see the beginning of life, the beginning of creation. We see the beginning of sin. We see the beginning of um uh, commands. We see the beginning of sacrifice. We see the beginning of languages. We see, um, you know, just the beginning of God's people, the beginning of so many different things that take place. The, the first covenant. We see the first blood offering. We see, you know, just um, so many new, so many beginnings in the book of Genesis. And so I want you to really take notes so you can go back through these chapters and begin to meditate on them as we're studying them. So we're going to close out in prayer. Um, uh, and in the next session, again, we're going to be going into Genesis chapter 11. Um, we'll be going into more detail then. But today, you know, I didn't want to skip over this chapter. I typically don't, you know, dig real deep into the who begot, who begot, who begot, who. But we need to understand that these that 70 nations were birthed through these three sons. And it's going to be significant as we go through the chapters and books further down the road. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we praise you. We love you. We worship you, God. We thank you for your word, for your truth. We thank you for feeding us and giving us wisdom and knowledge and understanding, God, as we go through your word and study to show ourselves approved. As we meditate on your word day and night, help us to see and to seek the principles and to apply your word to our life, that we would be the men and women of God you purpose us to be. So we love you, God. We thank you for what you're doing in us and through us. We pray for healing and wholeness. And Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your son. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, God, Father, for continuing the good work you begin in us until Christ Jesus. And we give you all praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you to life. And I will see you on our next session of The Sit-Ups.